let's let's talk about the the peptides that uh, and we we touched on the BPC one fifty seven. But what about the, the the peptides that you've been using for a little bit that you get good results, and then the things that you're excited about because are these technically legal for athletes to take? I mean, can you test these? Yeah. So a lot of these, a lot of these peptides are legal and some of them are not. And so there's a web page for, and it just depends on, you know, what you're doing, right? Right. If you're in the Olympics or you're in something that's, you know, where you're getting drug tested, a lot of these peptides are banned. Okay. Uh, and they I mean, test for them. I mean, can't, since it's uh, that's the whole thing, is right? Like, it's because ba- back in the day, HGH, right? Like there wasn't a test for H. They didn't know have a way to. So how can you test? For I don't. It? I don't really think they have testing for all these things. Um, it's too hard because they're naturally occurring and they're going to break down at different levels and different people. So I think it's going to be really difficult for them to actually test. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I would probably throw out a number that the majority of like the NFL is probably on peptides. I would imagine if, if not almost all of them, I mean, it's such a great advantage. I mean, if you're, if somebody's on peptides and the other person's not, and they're equal athletes, the guy on peptides is going to win. Yep. So if, if you're comparing like a peptide versus your traditional, like anabolic steroid, is, is, is there any correlation whatsoever? Just different. You know, um, the anabolics are going to have a faster action. Um, they're just a little bit stronger, right? You know, they've been tailored for a little while, but they also have some pretty nasty side effects, Yeah. right? Where your peptides are not. So you might have to do peptides for longer courses to get that kind of an action. Yeah. I mean, cause I mean, we've all seen it, you know, somebody goes onto um, a steroid, you know, for a few months, uh, a number of months. And you're like, I don't even recognize that guy anymore. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> I've seen people put on like 10 pounds in a week and not like they, they take their, you know, like what was it back in the day? Like Diana ball, like D yeah. and Sustanin and <laughs> see them like a week later, like, Holy shit. You know, like their shoulders are all, you know, acne up and also, but it, it, it is pretty crazy. Right. And what's, what's sad is that those anabolic steroids actually have a medical use mm-hmm. and that they've been banned, but they should be legal to be used in intensive care. Mm you're sitting there and you're on a heart lung machine and you're fighting for your life. You should have anabolic steroids. Mm-hmm. Right. Why not? Right. Like, you know, we, 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 we need to be giving you amino acids IV and we should be giving you anabolics and letting your body heal. And you know, the ster- obviously these peptides, but I mean, there's a, there's a place for everything if it's used right. Right. But, you know, I don't really think you really need steroids as an athlete. I think that these peptides are enough and good training and good nutrition and good sleep. What are the peptides that, that you're excited about and that you prescribe the most? Probably the one I do the most is, um, is a combination, right? And it's what you've done, right? The CJC 1295 along with Ipamoron. Yep. And so what those two are is one is um, a growth hormone releasing peptide. And the other one's a growth hormone releasing hormone. Mm. And we like to use them together so that you get a better um, release and a more potent release. And some people use like a one-to-one ratio and some people use a two-to-one ratio. I don't think it matters all that much. I haven't seen that much of a difference to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, Because one is kind of helping the other and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're working on different different targets. Um, The big thing is that you inject while fasting. Mm -hmm. Because what I found is that if you inject while you're fed and a lot of athletes are using, you know, five, six meals a day. Um, And so if you, if you're, if you're fed within two hours of injecting, for sure, what's going to happen is after you inject some of that peptide, instead of releasing growth hormone is going to release uh, insulin. Mm. And that's just not going to help you. Right. right. You release that insulin and you, and you might potentially, you know, that food might be stored as fat essentially. Yeah. So, you know, you just have to change a little bit, you know, as fast before you do your injection. Um, you can do aminos. So that won't mess it up if you, you know, so I just say stay away from the fats and the carbs and use amino acids before you go to bed. So what people experience who were taking like the CJC and the more on combination, they uh, just, 
you know, better tissue growth and strength? And what's the general things that people are going to feel? Yeah. So loss of visceral fat, which is fat. Fantastic. Um, they're going to be able to use their fat more efficiently and they're going to recover much faster and they'll add muscle. So it's not like a huge muscle gain like you will with a steroid, but if you're doing good at least three days a week of, you know, training, uh, heavy training, because I, I, you know, beyond that, I think it's kind of hard to heal, you know, and maybe you can go beyond that if you're a more advanced athlete, it just depends on who you are. Right. Yeah. But if you're training hard and you keep adding stress and you keep adapting, I mean, I've seen people add five, 10 pounds on one, one, uh, one round. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, for, for me and what I felt has worked the best is I do basically a three day with a three day a week of, you know, a kind of full body routine mm -hmm. and then two or three days a week of the, um, accessory or ancillary movement. So maybe it's like biceps and triceps or abdominal work. And then one or two days a week where we're throwing in some intervals and then, you know, day of some mobility or just like complete rest or walking. Uh, I, I feel tremendous on doing it that way. Yeah, that's great. You know, I mean, uh, I just did a, I just did a short cycle just, I wanted to get really back into, uh, you know, uh, compound movements. Yeah. So only squats, deadlifts, overhead press, that kind of stuff. And having the peptides just allowed me to just keep adding every single time I worked out, just kept adding weight, adding weight, adding weight, adding weight. And I didn't feel like I was, you know, crunching under the bar or compromising my form or straining or anything. I just felt fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is pretty crazy. So what's, what is the uh, average cycle length that people should be taking on something like this? And uh, how long does it take to feel benefits? About 10 weeks is one cycle. I try not to do more than two cycles a year. Mm, how's that? Uh, and the reason I do that is, you know, I, I, my, a lot of my focus is age reversal. Mm -hmm. And so what we understand about the people that live to be like a hundred and that kind of stuff is that, you know, they're on lower protein diets and that their insulin growth factor levels are very low. Um, so I think it's good to pulse growth hormone, mm -hmm. you know, and you pulse it, you have this burst at night and then during the day it kind of goes down. Yeah. Right. We don't want these long bursts of growth hormone because you could grow cancer. You could increase your senolytic cell burden, which is the cells that make you age. Right. Um, so I think like short bursts where you're like build some tissue up, and then you go back to like your intermittent fasting and, you know, do your water fasting and things like that to maintain. And then you can do another burst. Yeah. Right. Whereas if you stayed on something long-term one, your body would downregulate and say like, well, I'm not doing that anymore. Right. I, you know, balance everything out. It wouldn't work very well. And two, you could cause harm, but a 10 week cycle, you'll usually feel it probably at the end of the first week. Yeah. You'll see it at the end of the third week for sure. And then you'll, and you'll notice the benefits after you stopped injecting for another couple of weeks. Mm. So it, is, is that the same for all the, the growth hormone stimulating ones, or can you do like, maybe like the, uh, the BPC, could you do that more times or it doesn't yeah, BPC you can pretty much do all the time. Mm -hmm. if you needed to. It doesn't seem to have an effect where like the body doesn't work well with it. Yeah. I would pulse the thin motion beta four because it's an immune stimulant. Mm. Um, but the BPC, you could pretty much do all the time.